Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, happy Monday, everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of uh nightly wrap up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. If you are brand new to the channel, uh, we would really appreciate a like, share, and subscribe so you could be notified when we get uploaded on a nightly uh, basis. One piece of uh, business for all you guys uh, who are out there who've been loyal uh, viewers and followers and all that good stuff, uh, we are on, on rolling out our uh, May uh, promotion for uh, the live webinar. Uh, if you have been on the fence or are curious about uh, the wonderful world of pivots, uh, we have an incredible, uh, we have an incredible community of really good traders and, and, and traders how most of them started out like a lot of you guys a year or two years into your journey, a lot of questions, not so many answers. You're kind of looking at the market through the scope of social media and you're only getting social media answers. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's all based on technical analysis, supply and demand, and all these wiggly, crazy charts, that, that all these quiggly lines that you think are are so unnecessary. There's definitely methods to the madness. So if you are uh, if you are interested in pivots, guys, uh, the, Kyler will put in a link. Uh, you have a, you have a, you have a several days to take advantage of it, and I do believe uh, it is pretty cool, and I think it'll really give you a different perspective uh, of the market that you are used to. So let's talk about it. So Friday, uh, we broke out on the Nasdaq Composite, right? The QQQs broke out, uh, finally got above uh, this uh, April uh, the fourth high of twenty three twenty one sixty three. And as you can see here, we are just building above it, right? We're just building above it two days in a row. And you can see here, since we broke out, we're kind of just straddling this rising 60-minute uh, support and just straddling here and just, you know, putting a lot of bears to sleep. Now, you know, obviously, uh, we have earnings still on deck this week. Tomorrow, you got uh, AMD. Uh, Thursday is the big one. You have uh, Apple is definitely going to set the tone. Uh, Fed in between, right? In between. Uh, all that stuff. We're definitely going to get the tone. We're definitely going to get a different uh, type of sentiment, either confirmation or shift uh, co combination of the Fed on Wednesday and uh, Apple's numbers. But right now, it's the same thing. You, you were watching the same movie play out now uh, for the last couple of weeks. You're seeing soft, light volume weakness uh, in the morning. You know, they're getting down to the 60 minute support, they're trapping on the 60 minute support and then just ripping up towards the end of the day. And you can see that with so many examples. You saw Apple today, uh, you saw Apple today drift down to the bottom of the range here, right? Drift down to the bottom of the range in the morning, showed some weakness, trap, go higher. You saw the Qs did exactly the same thing. Qs traded down to the back of the channel and exploded higher. You had Meta, which we've been talking about, awaiting for a final resumption since the earnings. They did exactly the same thing. They got down to the bottom of the 60 minute support trapped and closed the highest level uh, on the earnings highs that we've been talking about for several days. It was imminent. We've been talking about it nonstop in the webinar. Uh, I know a lot of you guys got long ready at the bottom of the channel here, which is awesome. Uh, that finally broke out above uh, the 242 level, went to the 244s. Uh, so, you know, things are looking good uh, in the market. One group that is not looking group is, well, again, the banking group. Obviously, everybody knows the fiasco with FRC. And today we saw another one, not that it's, uh, you know, withstood uh, the test of selling, but, you know, they started coming, PAGW, I believe uh, they're a bank in the West Coast. Um, makes sense, PAGW. Um, you know, they started coming when the stock was around 960s, they started coming for the nine and a half, the nines, uh, the eight and a half, and the eight weeklies. Uh, you know, keep an eye on this thing. They even, I, I, I believe they even came for the May 19th expiration. It was either seven and a half or seven. We, you know, we don't know what's going on there. We're just kind of looking what the market is telling us. But, you know, look at the close on this thing, right? Look at the close. Uh, this thing is sitting right on this Bollinger Band. And if PAGW starts losing this Bollinger Band, who knows, maybe this is the next one. Uh, to start hitting the skids. We don't know. We're just we're just kind of reporting the news. Uh, we are not uh, making it. But the cool part about what we're seeing today, uh, I thought today was one of 
Um, probably one of the more seamless days I can remember. Uh, stocks triggered, they just went, right? They just absolutely went. Uh, even the bounces were very calm. There was no shakeouts. There was no jitters. And again, you could turn around and say, well, the volume wasn't great today. Well, the volume doesn't need to be great for a stock to hold the bottom of the range. That's the whole point. You don't want the stock to come in with 10 times volume on the bottom of the range. You want live volume. That's exactly what we're seeing here. What a lot of names. Uh, we saw the resumption again today in Meta. We saw in NVIDIA, you know, NVIDIA broke out on Friday, right? We talked about on the weekend update, broke out on Friday, confirmed today. And this thing just went absolutely insane. And talk about the option flow. They were coming in right off the word go this morning. They came in for the 285 and 90 weeklies, right? The stock went to 290, uh, went nuts. And then you started seeing the Junes, 300s, 315s, 320s. So I, I know a lot of I know a lot of the street uh, has been very, very negative in the video, and you know, you know, with with good, with absolutely good uh, intentions, but this thing keeps on just squeezing and squeezing and squeezing. So the mantra of the market has been exactly the same uh, for tomorrow, no matter what you're trading. You know, as long as if it's a strong stock and close strong today, you know, like a Meta, like a Nvidia, right? Stocks like that. If there's light volume opens on these things, and we've been talking about this nonstop now for three weeks, but if there's, you know, if there's light volume open and they get trapped and, buyer, and buyers are technically there to support emotional sellers at the bottom of the range, there's a good chance at some point that stock is going to go green in the day. And we saw that today in the indexes. We saw that today with Apple, Meta, NVIDIA. I'm sure there's other names. Uh, but the point is we are in a very, very strong market right now. Can that change at any point? 100%, right? We talk about this every single day. If I knew, if I really or anybody really knew where the market was going to be uh, beyond the next trading day, and again, we don't even know uh, you know, 100% what's going to happen. We think we know what's going to happen. We, we are setting up game plans uh, to believe we know what's going to happen. But until it actually confirms, a game plan is just a game plan. That's all it is. Until it confirms, uh, we have nothing but uh, a game plan on the table. So it's very, very important to be, uh, you know, to be, um, you know, to be ready on both sides of the market uh, as we talk about. So let's review a couple of names, just kind of see where we are. NVIDIA, again, breaking out here, good volume. They report in a couple of weeks. Again, any any light volume weakness, you want to be a buyer. Uh, you have Meta that broke out today as well, right? Meta broke out today as well. Again, you want to watch this thing on any remount tomorrow, any remount tomorrow into light volume you want to keep an eye on that. Apple reports on on Thursday. The one thing I, I, I've i definitely been noticing on Apple, and you guys saw this today as well, there's a lot of deep out of the money put buyers with some big, big capital. Again, is that going to, you know, is that going to automatically translate to Apple's going to lose their quarter? <laughs> Who the hell knows, right? It's all speculation, but there's some really, really uh, big bets. I, you know, I saw some bets uh, for the 165s, I saw some bits for the, for the 160s when the stock was at 170. I saw, saw a really, really big bet uh, for the 170 in the money puts. We'll, we'll see. Again, uh, you know, Apple is notorious for buybacks. Uh, Apple is no notorious for dividend increases. Again, I your guess is as good as mine. Uh, what's going to happen on earnings? But we are seeing uh, at least some, uh, some at least some clues from institutional market flow. Tesla, right? So Tesla had a couple of days worth of uh, bounces. It put in kind of a, you know, middle channel here. I don't want to use the word, you know, I don't want to use the word a res day, but it's starting to get very, very tight, right? You guys see that? You know, I'm watching this thing either if it loses the bottom of the range here in the next couple of days, or if it finally takes out the 10-day moving average. You can see here, it's been rejected off the same level here multiple, multiple times. So it's a two-sided trade. Uh, th today is probably one of the first days in a while that I didn't trade Tesla. It's just trading too tight. We're still waiting a little bit more clarity, but you can see here, it's either going to reclaim the 10 day moving average or lose the five and start going back to lows. Netflix today for, for a while was, uh, you know, getting hit pretty aggressively today. It held support here. It's also starting to get very, very tight. You can see the 20 day moving average, which is the April 24 highs. And it keeps on holding, right? It keeps on holding this bottom channel here. Something has to give here uh, in the next several days. Amazon is just fading uh, since the earnings. Uh, this is the first close uh, below this 150-day moving average. Obviously, when we talk about being prepared on both sides of the market, again, you need to have some longs. You need to have some shorts. So I want to keep an eye on Amazon. If you look at the 60-minute view, right, it's below this linear regression line. And if it could just confirm today's channels tomorrow, hey, there's a shot. This thing does get uh, to the 50-day 
uh, moving average. Uh, Microsoft had a wonderful, wonderful run, absolutely marvelous run from 300 uh, all the way up to the 309 on Friday. I think this thing needs a couple of days rest. Probably, I, you know, I, I would get interested in this thing somewhere around this 303 level. You see this rising support here, somewhere around 303. And I think it needs, to, it's it's having a good digestion cycle. Uh, yesterday, uh, it's, excuse me, today, maybe have one or two more days, somewhere around the 303, maybe if it gets down to the five-day moving average, it finally starts to wake back up again. Um, you know, good-looking charts. But Disney, I, I also like uh, for the next couple of days, this is a long, long distribution. It keeps on getting rejected here uh, at the same area. This thing looks, it list, it list thing's ready to go. It just needs to confirm uh, the upper channel. So, you know, look, look, we're, we're set up. I think there's a lot of technology names that look good. Spies, you know, they, they started reversing today uh, off the Bollinger Band. But all in all, you know, it's the same formula over and over again. Weakness, uh, weakness in the morning. Uh, they get trapped in the afternoon. They go green, whether they continue to go green or they at least trap at the bottom of the range. They are still doing both. And that's a very, very important point of what this market is doing and why a lot of bears are being very, very frustrated unless you're seeing a very specific stock like a Pack W, like an Amazon with clear channels back to the downside that they, they, they need to be confirmed. It, it is a very, very strong market and super important uh, to you know obey the trend and not to kind of recreate your own uh, narrative. Well, it's safer that way. So let's talk about today's pivots. Uh, Meta, again, here was, you know, here was the, the big earnings breakout. We talked about Meta on the weekend update. Uh, it finally broke out. 241.70 needs to build. Uh, Meta went all the way up to uh, 244. Again, any, any build above uh, today's highs is going to set this thing going. The next, you know, next move higher, if this thing starts confirming today's channels, you have a move, you have room all the way from 245 to like 255 in that whole hot pocket. So nice move here, uh, matted towards the end of the day. Here was definitely the move of the day. Uh, Nvidia, 279 rejected twice pre-market, needs to build. I thought at least they could take a shot and get to 281.10. Hell, I, I would say it did that, right? Uh, Nvidia just went absolutely nuts. Uh, here is the two, here is the two uh, 79 that it got rejected twice pre-market. Uh, the two pre-market channels. This thing just went absolutely out of its mind. Again, they were coming for the 285s, 290s, June's 300, 310s, 315s. So huge move on Nvidia. Congratulations, definitely the move uh, of the day. Uh, Tesla continues to trade in in a very tight cycle. Uh, Disney again, 10260s got rejected now twice. Keep an eye on Disney for the near future. Uh, Airbnb, nice little pop into supply. Uh, 12133 needs to build. Here was uh, Airbnb, right? Airbnb took out this 2133, traded right to supply at 2260s. If this thing could put a new base in the next couple of days above 123, I think this Airbnb uh, is going to wake up. Just check your earnings to, to make sure when they're done. Uh, ISRG, we talked about in the weekend video, 302 sneaky area and 305 needs to confirm earnings highs. Here it was uh, ISRG, right? It took out the 302, it took out the 305, went almost to 309. Nice move here before it retraced here towards the end uh, of the day. Oh, and yeah, can, guys, by the way, before there was that uh, earnings high, earnings high, uh, earnings high uh, move on Meta, there was a remount that just what we talked about off the 60 minute high. I literally missed the remount. It was at 236.40s. I literally missed the remount by like two, three pennies. I know a lot of you guys caught it. This thing caught the bottom of the range, trapped shorts, went to green, took out earnings highs, and basically was put up an $8 move uh, from the bounce bus. So for all you guys who did get a great job, I missed uh, I missed the, the bounce, but I got uh, I got the earnings break, which was, which was fine. Uh, and I believe that is it. That's it, guys. So we are set up a good uh, start to the week, very organic very lethargic, very predictable, and that's the way we like it. Once again, guys, if you are interested in pivots, I'm doing this for 24 years. All I never take credit for anybody's success. It's all about the charts. It's all about technical analysis. Uh, if you if you want to come aboard for the, for the next uh, 30 days, take a shot, man. What's the worst thing that happens? The worst case, you look at the market with an absolutely different approach for the rest of your career. I think it's going to be really, really beneficial to your development. Guys, have a great, great night. God bless, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.